Hi, thank you for joining us for A Place of Faith. We are so glad to have you with us here today. Welcome to June and a world gone wild, right? I appreciate you spending your time with us. A Place in Faith invites and encourages all who are seeking a community to empower, support, and explore deeper understanding of spirituality and recovery of all kinds. We join together with our family and loved ones to, in our journey to enlightenment and recovery, supporting one another spiritually without judgment or prejudice. The spiritual principle we're going to be working on today is judgment. It seems like there's a lot of that going around. It's kind of nice to think maybe there's something spiritual in that idea. And now, please join me in prayer. Higher power, be here with us now. Help us to see beyond the illusion of what is happening, sometimes right outside our door, and into the big picture that you are greater than any fear, and that you are here. As we know that God is good, we begin to look for the good around us in celebration of love and joy and knowing that this too will become a blessing somehow, some way. Amen. And now Jody is going to play some music for us. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> I've got an attitude, I've got an attitude, I've got an attitude of gratitude. I thank the universe for each new day, whether it's sunny or it's pouring. Jody, I love that song, Attitude of Gratitude. So this segment here is what we're calling Principle in Action. And it gives us an opportunity to kind of give a, a testimony of how this spiritual principle has affected us personally or been a part of our life. And it's my great honor to talk a little bit about um, the spiritual principle of judgment. 
I think a lot of us know that we have a tendency to judge the things that we don't really understand. Uh, things that um, maybe we've never dealt with straight, straight up, you know, head on, face to face. And that may go back to our roots as, as cave people. If we had cave people roots where that sound could be a new creature that could eat us. So we would judge that sound as bad until we found out, you know, it's a bunny rabbit. We're probably safe, right? So some of my greatest heroes in, in the world, and, and until we were looking at this particular principle, I didn't realize I had a lot of heroes, but wow, I do. We just recently celebrated Harvey Milk, and I hope you know that story. What, what an incredible person, and Martin Luther King, and so many people who have stood up and said, judge me, not them. This is the face of whatever it is you hate. This is what it is you're afraid of. And, you know, other heroes along that, that line, Robert Downey Jr. stood up and exposed problems and situations that so many people run from. Ah, and, and what a great face, and, and he's still up there, and he's still talking about it. Harvey Milk standing up with the courage to be who he really was, gay, when it was not a good time. And he got elected, and he represented his people. He stood up and he said, judge me, not them. I've tried to do that a little bit in my recovery, not that I'm trying to be, you know, all that or any kind of a hero, but when I first came into the rooms of recovery, like so many of us, right, I was trying to find reasons why it did not fit in and I did not belong there and, and it was those people, not my people. And I used to sit in the room and think, well, of course you can recover, right? You're, you never lost half of what I did. You were never as sick as I was. And, and, you know, over over the years, I realized that the other people were sitting there looking at me saying, I don't belong here. I've never been as sick as you are. I don't need this if, if it's for people like you. And so often we look at, at things that are different instead of seeing things that are alike. And we judge them to figure out our own place. <clears throat> I realized early on that the judgment of me, and I was so afraid that people would see who and what I really was, could have really destroyed me. There was a time in, in the recovery world when the theory was to beat you down and, and build you back up again. But the reality is nobody could beat me down the way that I did. And if you started beating on me too, there would be nothing left. I wouldn't survive. So when I realized that, that whole dynamic and got my, my recovery legs under me a little bit and got used to actually walking the talk, I started blowing my anonymity. I'm, I'm in recovery more than that. I'm a junkie in recovery. And the whole point of that is judge me, not somebody else. If you want to... Um, talk about somebody and get all judgmental and hateful, do it to me. I can take it and it really won't hurt me. But other people can be devastated by that. So judgment as a spiritual principle. We'll learn a lot more of that when we get into the lesson today. But hopefully we've given you a little bit of food for thought. And now I would like to introduce Judy G, who is going to present our concepts for contemplation. A little something to think about. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And as we talk about another concept of judgment, I'm going to tell you a story about a Chinese farmer. Once upon a time, there was a Chinese farmer whose horse ran away. That evening, 
all of his neighbors came around to commiserate. They said, we're so sorry to hear your horse has run away. This is most unfortunate. The farmer said, maybe. The next day, the horse came back, bringing seven wild horses with it. And in the evening, everybody came back and said, oh, isn't that lucky? What a great turn of events. You now have eight horses. The farmer again said, maybe. The following day, his son tried to break one of the horses, and while riding it, he was thrown and broke his leg. The neighbors then said, oh dear, that's too bad. And the farmer responded, maybe. The next day, the conscription officers came around to conscript people into the army, and they rejected his son because he had a broken leg. Again, all the neighbors came around and said, isn't that great? Again, he said, maybe. The whole process of nature is an ent integrated process of immense complexity, and it's really impossible to tell whether anything that happens is in it is good or bad because you never know what will be the consequences of the misfortune, or you will never know what will be the consequences of good fortune. This was by Alan Watts. Sometimes to live this life Some days I'd rather run and hide Maybe then the pain would hide as well Maybe then I could protect myself Who's gonna win? Is that really living? Oh, I wish I didn't know That the answer is no Nobody would win Cause I could close I don't see I could close my mind and pretend that I'm free but my soul knows the truth life means stepping back in I'm gonna open my heart again Sometimes when I've done wrong Some days I'd rather just move on Maybe then I wouldn't have to cry Maybe then I could protect my pride Who's gonna win? Is that really loving? Oh, I wish I didn't know That the answer is no Nobody would win Cause I could close I could close my mind and pretend that I'm free But my soul knows the truth Life means stepping back in I'm gonna open my heart I could 
close my eyes and pretend I don't see. I could close my mind and pretend that I'm free, but my soul knows the truth, and life means stepping back in. Gonna open my heart again. Open my heart wonderful song. Thank you for sharing that, Jody. Would you please join me in meditation? Let's take a breath in. Relax in your seat and know that you are supported by the divine. As you breathe into this quiet and safe place, Take with you the quiet word of judgment. We know that judging others, we judge ourselves. Our ego sets in and tries to tell us the difference between right and wrong and we know the truth as we connect deeper and deeper inside ourselves with our recovery we find that one big truth that we are all one. We are all together in this, and we have each other. Sit in the stillness, in the quiet, and listen to that truth. Take another breath in and release all the judgment you hold. We know this is a process to release. And during our week, as we find ourselves thinking in judgment, breathe in and release. Set it down and move on. Step by step, we can do this together in our oneness. And so it is. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Jody. That was wonderful. Please join me in prayer. God be with us. In all that we think and do and say, be with us in every moment of every day. God, be closer to us than our heartbeat, than our breath. Let us know you're here when we're awake or at rest. 
we rejoice in all that you are and all that we become when we turn our eyes, our mind, our thoughts to truth and know that we are one. Amen. The spiritual principle of judgment. This was kind of a tricky spiritual principle to take on. Just the word judgment carries a, a sting like a little scorpion. Almost every big religious um, background book study has its own uh, philosophies, its own warnings, its own day of judgment. The warm aden is the day of judgment when Allah will decide how people will spend their afterlife. Most Muslims believe they have free will to make their own choices. They also believe that they will be judged by God for those choices. They recognize that humans are still responsible for their actions. I think the idea behind the, the judgment day is to help us to be motivated, to do good, to want good. When God's purpose for the universe has been fulfilled, the world will be destroyed. When the world ends, is, if, excuse me, I'm going to guess at this name, is Raphael will sound a trumpet and therefore will be a resurrection. All the dead bodies will be raised and will gather on the plain of Arafat for the final judgment. When the bodies are raised from the dead, they will be naked so that nothing can be hidden. They will also be given their own book of deeds. They will take it in turns to read aloud from their book so that nothing can be hidden. In Islam, everyone, even non-Muslims, will be judged on their good and bad deeds. Muslims believe a set of scales will balance the good deeds and the bad deeds. We all carry with us different beliefs, fears of, of judgment. In the Christian faith, Jesus was known to say, thou shalt not judge. But does that really ever happen? We judge all the time, even when we think, no, I'm not judgmental. I practice absolute acceptance. I don't judge anything. So really, let's look at our feelings. Do you not judge some feelings are good feelings and some feelings are bad feelings? But are they really? We might think that anger is a bad feeling, and there's a lot of anger around us right now. But the reality is anger is an energizing feeling. It's not the feeling that's good or bad. It's what you do with it, what you use that feeling to move you into, to create, to co-create, to become. Another example is love. Love is such a good feeling. We love love. But what happens when we lose love? Do you remember your very first lost love? When we really told ourselves we would never do that again? We would never expose ourselves to that kind of pain that we had no idea loving someone could cost us so much pain. But something that came out of that for almost every single one of us is that the very next time we fell in love, we fell in love knowing what it could cost us. We fell in love knowing full well what we risked. And you know what? We got better at it. We put more of ourselves, more of our soul, more of our own judgment, our own flavor into that love. Judging as a spiritual concept. Still hard to wrap our heads around, isn't it? Well, let's look at this. 
Judging as comparing ourselves to others. Okay, we've all been guilty of that, right? How many times have we told ourselves, at least I only ate one donut, he ate two donuts, or at least I'm taller than she is, or my car is so much better than that car. We're judging as a way of trying to make ourselves feel better about ourselves or to feel worse about ourselves. We're manipulating ourselves when we're comparing ourselves to others. Well, that doesn't sound very spiritual, does it? Here's another big judgment that we need to be careful of that many of us, I can, I can own it, I've done it, I hope I don't still do it, but I might. Contempt prior to investigation, right? where we make judgment on something before we've even tried it, before we've ever done it. Sometimes it's a good idea. I know all kinds of people would never, ever, ever imagine um, skydiving, jumping out of an airplane. They judge that as bad or insane. When I did it, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. but. I've never done all kinds of things, and I've decided not for me without even trying. Judgment as contempt prior to investigation. <clears throat> Many of you know I'm very blessed to live with a delightful five-year-old, and getting this child to eat is a unique experience. He doesn't eat it if he doesn't like the look of it, if he doesn't like the smell of it, if he does not like the texture. He doesn't eat anything that's spicy. He despises chocolate. He won't eat cake, but he'll eat cookies. He is full of contempt prior to investigation, and it always makes me laugh. He will eat peanut butter and jelly, so we've got something that we can fall back on. How about judging to create or minimize fear? I think we're seeing some of that in the world right now. People judging to make you angry or to calm your anger. It's okay, it's not that bad, it's gonna be better. Or it is so awful, oh my gosh, did you see this? So often we're manipulated by the news, by um, stories that our friends say, by our own employers, by our own family members. We're manipulated with their judgments. We jump on board. And we need to really be careful about that. Is that our judgment or is it their judgment? And is it spiritual or is it something completely different? When I started in college long, long ago, I went through a class and one of the things that the professor asked us to do was to share about the worst thing that ever happened to us. And I believe in the exercise, um, he said something like, the, the one thing you would change if you could change it. And looking at my story, there were some things that I wouldn't have voted into my lifeline, right? If, if I was saying, I choose this, this, and this. There are some things I wouldn't have choosed. And maybe that would have been contempt prior to investigation. Because there isn't a single worst thing that ever happened to me. Don't get me wrong. I've had some experiences that I would do everything in my power to protect the people around me, whether I liked them or not, from going through because of their experiences I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish on anyone. But from each of those experiences, something different happened. Just like the story that Judy shared with us on the Chinese farmer, Sometimes things look bad, but have really wonderful consequences. Sometimes we don't get to enjoy those consequences because of the judgments that we've placed on them. So now let's finally get to the point, right? Spiritual judgment is 
what we would call discernment. It's important for us to be able to make a decision about what belongs on our path and what doesn't belong on our path. We need to be able to discern, and that's a form of judgment. Discernment is the ability to obtain sharp perceptions or to judge well. Discernment can be psychological, moral, or aesthetic in nature. Within judgment, discernment involves going past the mere perception of something and making subtle judgments about its properties or qualities. So what does that mean? It means we need to be mature enough to be able to decide what fits in our life and what we want to step away from. We need to be mature enough to know if this has value to us or if it's really going to detract, detract from who it is we're trying to be. One of the problems I had when I started on a spiritual path was the idea that you love everyone equally. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? I finally discerned that what that means is you don't hate and, and you don't carry resentments because that hurts you, that hurts me. If I hate people or carry resentments about them, they're taking up space in my head. They're causing me to change who I am and they're separating me from the purpose that I'm here for for what I want to achieve and who I want to be, I can lovingly decide which of the everyone's out there I'm going to focus on and spend my time with and share my path with and walk along beside. It doesn't need to be every person in the whole world. Every person in the whole world isn't even interested in walking on the path with me. And, you know, some of the ones that want to jump up on my path really don't belong there. They aren't there for the same reasons that I'm there for. And I can use the spiritual principle of judgment, of discernment, to decide who I want beside me, who empowers me and raises me up, and who intimidates me and scares me away, who challenges me to be better, and who keeps me backed off and, and locked down so that I can't be who I know I need to be. And how do I know the difference? You learn to trust yourself. I've learned to trust myself. And you learn to trust God. Trust your higher power. Trust that you will be able to discern who you want to become, who you want to share yourselves with. What we believe and stand for and why is our discernment. And mastering this principle illuminates our path so that we can see the next step, so that we know we're going in the right direction. Please pray with me. God, we are so grateful. As we learn about, accept, and carry into the future our ability to judge fairly, to discern, to be at peace with ourselves, and to know that we are worthy of our opinions, of our instincts, of our decisions. And we are so grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. It's up to me to give of my heart. Love is my decision, and no one else can 
tell me to start and once I to me to stand on that bridge and love is my decision no one else can make me forgive and once I decide right here and now my decision right here and now in bringing our time together to a close we have a few announcements we want to work with your organization and if we can bring our service to your organization, please contact at us at a place of faith at zohumail.com. Our program is open and wonderful and willing to serve your recovery community. You can also connect with us on Facebook or through email, once again, at a place of faith at zohumail.com. We would like to thank you for your continued support of this ministry. And we ask that you send your checks to Unity Church of El Cajon, or you can visit their website and use the donate button or call the church office with a credit card. Just remember to designate that these funds are for a place of faith. And if you'll stand by for more details that will be forthcoming, because we will be having a new time when we do the personal one-on-one -on -one service, and it will start at 12 noon. Like I said, details will be forthcoming. The closing prayer, a prayer of St. Francis, as you will listen as I share that, Lord, Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to understand as to be understood, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Thank you for joining us today. We will see you next week.